Welcome to Educator.com Introduction to Music Theory. Our lesson objectives will be an explanation of the visual language of music, an introduction to the keyboard, and an exploration of chord progressions. So the first thing you encounter when you look at notes is a staff. We have in front of us a grand staff. When you first learn music theory, you learn about a single staff, one, but usually that would be a treble clef. In our class, we'll be using a grand staff, which is made a grand staff because you have two staffs, one, two, and we have two clefs, the treble clef and the bass clef. These are joined together by a brace. Now what we're going to do is explain treble clef and bass clef and practice drawing them. Treble clef start when you draw a treble clef, it's the one on top, it looks like an S. You begin below the staff, have your line go up through, you cross over like that. So as you notice, you may have noticed, and if you haven't I will tell you, the end of the treble clef ends at this line. The treble clef is telling us that this line is G. So if you also look carefully, the treble clef looks like a G. This is a sign that we are in treble clef and that this is G. So we have different ways of remembering the lines and spaces of the treble clef. Um, line Bottom line is E, next is G, B, D, F. We can use Every Good Boy Does Fine. That's the classic, that's great. We can also make up our own, whatever you prefer. The spaces, our face in the space. That's a really easy way to remember. The first space is F, then A, then C, then E. This is not easy to remember. Don't feel like you need to memorize it in one second. It takes people years to get to the point where they can look at the staff and say that is an F. Okay, that is a B. That is an E. So if you need to, you can write out on your staff every single lesson, E, G, B, D, F, F, A, C, E, to remind yourself of the notes and spaces on the staff. Okay, bass clef is good boys do fine always. And all cars eat gas or all cows eat grass. I like that one better. So that's how we remember bass clef. Now let's explore what letter the bass clef looks like. The bass clef begins below the second line from the top. We have two dots surrounding this line. This line is important in bass clef because bass clef is telling you that this line is F. And if you look carefully, the bass clef looks a little bit like an F. So when you're in bass clef, you know that this is F, so you can fill in the rest of the lines, knowing that F is the second from the top. Like treble clef, when you're reading in bass clef, it will take a while to get used to it. And in theory, you'll be often looking at the grand staff, which is what pianists look at when they play piano. As a theory student, it's pretty standard for you to look at the grand staff for every lesson. So let's move on to major scales and let's have some keyboard. So we're going to, in this course, we're going to learn how to play major scales. And we're going to use a pattern of intervals to find a major scale on any key. First, we're going to illustrate this by playing a scale on C. and the C scale is all white keys. It's really, really easy to remember. Now, for this course, if you have a keyboard at home, it will help immensely to play what I'm playing along with me. Your keyboard doesn't have to be fancy. It can be two octaves. It can be a kid's keyboard. Or if you play on a grand piano, all the better. But it can, it's really helpful because theory is pretty much based on piano. So if you get a keyboard at home, it will help you learn a lot more quickly. So, to play a C scale, what we're going to do is count whole steps and half steps. Um, 
Before we do that, I want you to try, if you have your keyboard at home, to just to use one finger and play from C to C and then back down again. This should sound pretty familiar to you. What we're doing is playing a series of whole and half steps. From C to D is a whole step. From D to E is another whole step. This is a half step. Why? Because they're right next to each other. The previous two intervals, C to D, there's a note in between them, right? And from D to E, there's a note in between those. So we call these whole steps. Here's a half step. From F to G, there's a note between, whole. G to A, note between, whole. A to B, whole. there's a note between, whole. B to C is a half. Look. These are the two half step intervals in our major scale. They look really similar. Let's play it again. Okay, so we're going to go to our keyboard on the page and we're going to count our intervals on the keyboard. So from C to, we'll learn the names of these notes a little bit later, but right now I want to illustrate our whole and half steps. So you know that you can take this pattern of whole and half steps and apply it to any key on the keyboard and create a major scale. All you have to know is how to count whole steps and half steps. Okay, so let's write out a major scale. Let's use our treble clef. And this is a new concept for you in this lesson, writing below the staff. This note is a middle C. And we will explore this in later lessons. For now, just trust that you are able to write on ledger lines above the staff anywhere you like. And it's kind of new for you right now, so don't worry if it seems really confusing. Just accept that this note is the same thing as that key. Every key in the keyboard has a home on the grand staff. So, whole whole, half, whole, 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 half. It looks really complicated, but it when you get to the keyboard and you can look at it and visualize it and play it, it seems a lot easier. So we have one, two, three, major and 12 minor scales. The one we just played was C major using this, 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 this. Okay, moving on to minor scales. We're going to explore the names of the notes on the keyboard a little bit later. For now, just trust me and if you have a piece of paper at home, you can draw a picture of your keyboard. It's kind of useful to be able to do that so you can study keyboard even if you don't have a keyboard in front of you. So it's really fun. Um, we start with a C and we draw the little black keys in like that. And it's basically just a replica of a keyboard so you can really visualize on the keyboard what you're doing as well as on the grand staff. So now we're going to study the minor scale and we're going to count whole steps and half steps in the minor scale. So you can play a minor scale. We're using the same white key only. We're starting on an A. This is an A natural minor scale. So let's count whole steps and half steps. between these two, that's a whole. There's nothing between these two, that's a half step. There's a note between these two, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. So let's go back to our drawing of the keyboard. And if you don't have a keyboard at home, this is especially helpful. So draw one out, please. We're going to start on our A. Down here. 
So C, B, A. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so between A and B is a whole step. B and C are right next to each other. This is a half step. C and D, whole. D and E, whole. E and F, half. F and G, whole. G and A, whole. So that pattern is whole, half, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. To find a minor, A minor scale on any key of the keyboard, you follow this pattern and you've got it. Let's write it out. So this one will begin on the top line of the bass clef. This is an A. B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Now, don't worry about the notation. I'm writing whole notes. We're going to learn about that later. Um, this is how a scale looks when you have it in treble clef and in bass clef. So this one sounds a little different from the C scale, right? Let's play them both. So the C scale, an A minor scale. The minor scale sounds a little bit sadder. Okay, so let's move on to our next concept, which will be the names of the white keys, which are, we always began with C because C is the key with no black keys. It's really easy to find chords and intervals in C it, because it's all white. And if you're a beginner, it's a really, really great place to start. So it just repeats. There's no, there's nothing after G. There's no H. So you just keep going A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You'll get really good at counting backwards in the alphabet when you're studying music because we do that a lot. If you, if you want to print out an image of a keyboard so you can practice doing this, it's a really, really good idea. So let's figure out where these notes are on the staff. This, as I said, is middle C, and middle C is a concept for keyboards with more than one octave. If you have a three octave keyboard, middle C will be your C towards the most middle of your keyboard. And it also has this exact tone. It shouldn't be this low or this high. This is middle C. Now wherever this tone sounds on your keyboard, that is middle C. So middle C on our grand staff happens between the two clefs, exactly in the middle. Middle C, it's right between treble clef and bass clef. Below middle C, we have our stems pointing down. Above middle C, we have our stems pointing up. So the notes above middle C, so here's middle C, the D above C is there, E above C is there, these have specific spots on the keyboard that correlate to specific places on the staff. Like this A is not here or here. This A and the second space of the treble clef is the A directly above middle C. Lots of neat little things in theory that you get to learn that are very, very specific and never wavering, always the same. Okay, names of black keys. Here we get into an interesting concept Black keys can have two different names. So this black key is between C and D. It could be C sharp or D flat. A sharp is when you raise something a half step. And you remember we were talking about half steps in the major scale and minor scale section? A half step is when, I'll write it, I'll play it for you in a second. Um, a half step is when you go up a half step or down one half step, from a white key to a black key usually, but there are two instances where a half step happens between white keys, lower half step. Okay, let's find a C and illustrate this concept. Here's a C. There's the C I was talking about. So here's the half step. This could be a D flat or a C sharp. There are many different key signatures, 12, that we will be exploring in this course. Some of them have sharps, some of them have flats. And this could be a sharp note or a flat note. This one, moving on to the next black key, 
is D sharp because it's tonally above D, or E flat because tonally it's below E. Okay, here is a white key half step example. And these can be enharmonically named as well, but it's a little complicated for this lesson, so we'll save that for later. Okay, this notes. Flat, F sharp, G flat. This one, G sharp or A flat. And finally, A sharp or B flat. Let's come back to our keyboard drawing. And this could be a D sharp or an E flat. Okay, now let's figure out where these are on the staff. And put our flats and sharps into action on the staff. So here is our C sharp. When you draw a sharp, you draw it right next to the note like that. That means you see the sharp, then you see the C, you automatically think, oh, C sharp, I'm going to play a C sharp. Okay, D flat. This is the same note. It looks very different, right? But that means the exact same thing. So D sharp and E flat. Now don't be intimidated by these notes I'm drawing. I've, so far in our lesson I've used whole notes and half notes and we're going to explore those notes and what they mean in a lesson pretty early on in the course. So the next black key we need is G flat or F sharp. So that one here is F sharp and here is G flat. So your sharp, when you're drawing a sharp on a space, you need to make sure that the middle of your sharp goes through the space. If it's a line, the middle of your sharp goes through a, a really specific line. One note, moving on, G sharp or A flat, and this is A sharp or B flat. So G sharp is the same thing as A flat. And then A sharp is the same thing as B flat. Notice we always put the sharp or flat before the note, not after the note. When I write it out after a letter, we write it after the letter. So that's another really confusing thing about music. When you write the note on the staff, you write the sharp or flat before. When you're talking about it in another context on paper, you write the letter and then the flat or sharp. Okay, how to play chords. So we're going to talk about finding chords in C. This is really easy because it's all white keys. So what you're going to do is play every other key. So C, E, and G. We, we're skipping two notes in the middle. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Just count up to five. One, two, three, four, five. And go up the keyboard. There are specific formulas to play major chords in every key and minor keys. And as you remember, A minor is all white keys too. So here we are playing in A minor. But when you play chords with the keyboard, it kind of loses a minor or major quality. And it just ends up progressing higher up the keyboard or lower down the keyboard. Almost too fast to tell if it's major or minor. So you just play every other key on the keyboard for any of them. So if you have a picture of a keyboard, you can draw it out like that, or just play it. Now when you're playing a chord, it looks like this. You stack the notes on top of one another, like that. I'll draw some quarter notes. That's what they look like. You play them all at the same time. If you have some chords in both clefs with lots of notes, like both hands, this is what it looks like. You play all those notes at the same time. Okay. Moving on to chord progressions. Now, chord progressions are a series of chords. What I played before was a chord progression. We can get a little more specific, and instead of just going up the scale, right, what we did before, we can find C, F, and G. This is a really classic rock, blues progression. C, So, we can write 
this out. Let's try it. So if you're new to piano, you can find your thumb, your third finger, and your fifth finger, these three, or your second finger and your fifth finger to play three notes at the same time. It may seem really challenging and crazy to try. You can use two hands. So you can use one finger on your left hand and two fingers on your right hand and just play the chords like that. So don't stress if it seems really, really complicated to play a chord with one hand, use two hands. Okay, so let's write out that chord progression. So we have C chord, F, G, F. That's what we played. Let's write it down. This is what it would look like if you looked at, if you're really, really good at reading chords, you could read C, F, G, F and play what I just played. So let's write a C. We'll write this in bass clef. This is what it looks like in bass clef. F, A, C, G, B, D, F, A, C. So I made this really far apart. I'm going to redo the C and scribble that out. That's what it looks like in bass clef. C, F, G, F. Let's write it out in treble clef. So here's the C chord, F, A, C. These three notes I'm writing over one another are just the notes that I was playing. They're vertical because you're supposed to play them all at the same time. That's what that looks like, C, F, G, F. So the way to play that is really easy. Find a C, go one, two, three, four, five. Now, jump to F and count up, one, two, three, four, five. Go up to G, count one, two, three, four, five. You're playing one, three, and five. Back to F, and back to C. Very easy. Really nice shortcut to playing C, F, G, F really quickly. So let's practice drawing our treble clef for this first example. Let's draw your treble clef, bass clef, and then a brace. And this line is called a bar line. Let's try it again, treble clef, bass clef, brace, bar line. It will be helpful if you have something called manuscript paper at home, which is basically a notebook full of paper that's lined with stabs like this. It might not have the treble and bass clef, so you would need to add that yourself. So it's important to feel really comfortable drawing the treble and bass clef and creating a grand staff. Okay, major scale on the keyboard. Let's remember our intervallic pattern. It was whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's also write out the scale. As you remember, we start on the middle C. You are going to learn how to figure this out eventually. For now, you can just copy this. This is the C scale. And we'll write the name of the note on our picture of the keyboard. And we'll go finally to our keyboard and count the whole steps and half steps. One, two. So here, this is a whole step because the half step, this note is in between. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That's how we find the major scale. So let's explore the minor scale, and we're going to find it the same way as we found the major scale. We're going to identify a pattern of whole and half steps. These are intervals. So first we'll find the letters of the keyboard, which we're going to keep practicing. It's okay if this is really confusing. You'll understand it. Just give it time. So A to B, this is a whole step. There's a black key in between them, whole. B to C, half. C to D, whole. D to E, whole. E to F, half. F to G, there's a black key between them, whole. G to A, whole. So let's write this out on the staff before we play it. And eventually you will understand this being middle C, that this A is below middle C. And we write that on a letter line. A, B, C, D. And you remember, this is treble clef, the bottom line is E, the first space is F, the next line is G, the next space is A. So here is your A minor scale. This is what it looks like on the staff. Copy this out, please, 
And even if it looks like a foreign language to you, it won't after this lesson. So just trust me and we can start our notation practice and our scale writing practice right away. Okay, let's move on to naming the white and black keys. A really good way to remember C and D is by finding the two black keys. And C is to the left, D is in the middle. These are two, these are two really good clues to find being the right notes on the keyboard. You can fill everything out after that. We don't have any letters after G because I think anything more than seven is too much. Likewise, we only have five lines on the, each staff because if we had more than five and we had a staff of like that many lines, you'd be counting lines and spaces like all day long. It would take forever. So here are the white keys. Black keys, as you remember, can be called C sharp, D flat, D sharp, E flat, F sharp, or G flat, G sharp, A flat, A sharp, or B flat. And on the keyboard, here's what everything looks like. We're going to st we'll do a whole octave from C to C, and we will be detailing every note diatonically. And I will play this for you when I'm done writing it. You should be copying along with me. C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F. I'm choosing to use sharps, but ev eventually you'll be free enough to write this scale out. This is called a chromatic scale using flats or sharps or a combination. For now, I'm sticking with sharps only. A, A sharp. B, C. Okay, so let's make this more of an obvious G. This is a G. So let's play what I just wrote out. Okay, here's the C. Middle C. Remember, it has its tone. C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, C. at the end of this course you can play piano that fast. So that's what this looks like. If you wrote this out, you just wrote out a chromatic scale. Okay, chords. As you remember, we're going to the C scale. We'll write our notes out and let's also number number this scale. One, two, three, four, five. If you want to play a chord in C, you take the first, third, and fifth scale degrees. So let's call up our keyboard again. One, three, five. If one hand is too hard for you to play a chord, use two hands and you can move down the keyboard or up the keyboard. These are chords. Right now you're playing chords in C major or A minor. You just take one, three, and five of any scale. It doesn't have to be C. It can be another scale that has black keys and there's your chord. Let's write out the C chord. As you remember from a previous example, when we write chords out, the notes are vertical. That means you play them all at the same time. That is different from this. This means you play these notes one at a time. When they're vertical, they're all simultaneous. Okay, let's explore some chord progressions. And we talked about one, four, five, four before and I just want you to listen to um, a couple of Beatles songs that illustrate how you can take really simple melodies and play maybe one note with different chords underneath of it and it changes drastically, it changes dramatically and it's just a really interesting thing to see someone play a Beatles song right in front of you and watch the notes move and you can see kind of how they wrote. And the Beatles are a great example to use for chord progressions because they wrote all the time. They were very, very successful songwriters and every single song they wrote is incredibly catchy. So we're going to start with a song they did called Lady Madonna. I'm going to play it really slowly, just the, the initial melody so you can really see where it's moving on the keyboard. And I'm going to try to play it on this keyboard where you can see. Let's see. Yeah. So 
that melody used all white keys except for this one. there is so simple but it's just a really really interesting um, example of what you can do when you know theory so let's go go on to um, Dear Prudence which is another really great Beatles song with a really good example of chord progressions and how they change one note this is the four chords. And it changes so much over the course of this A just sitting there. chords of D, D7, G, G7, C. Let me write a, a little bit of that down, but I'll also write the names of the songs down. It was Lady Madonna and Dear Prudence. These are two really, really good chord progression examples. We used the chords of C, G, D, and we also used um, G7, D7, C7. We will learn about the seventh chords at the end of the course. Thank you so much for watching this lesson and stay tuned to educator.com.